Okay, so this question, 38-year-old man who has a three-month history of muscle aches and fatigue, and he had a ureteral calculus a year ago, and a Technetium 99 scan shows a nodule in the central neck. And the question is simply asking which gene could be involved, okay? So ureteral calculus, okay, plus a nodule in the central neck. This is referring to parathyroid adenoma. Okay, this is going to be primary hyperparathyroidism causing increased serum calcium, and that could be a justification for his ureteral calculus, right? So students will ask, well, couldn't like a Technetium 99 scan technically show a thyroid nodule, not parathyroid? Sure, but that wouldn't necessarily, if you had a toxic adenoma secreting T3, T4, why would that relate to a ureteral calculus? Plus, there's not really much else to go by. Fatigue could be hypo thyroidism, maybe, uh, but not hyper, really. The bottom line is the scan is showing a parathyroid adenoma, not a thyroid adenoma. Um, so we look at the genes and we say, which one could be related to parathyroid? And the only answer is MEN1, okay? So when we talk about the multiple endocrine neoplasia syndromes, MEN1 is going to be pancreas pituitary parathyroid. So your pituitary can be any adenoma, usually prolactinoma. Parathyroid can be diffuse hyperplasia, the four glands, or it can be parathyroid adenoma. And then your pancreas, uh, any pancreatic cancer for the most part, but classically Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, gastronoma with ulcers. Students say, but I don't get it. Uh, there's no other manifestations of MEN1 here. They're not talking about ulcers or bitemporal hemianopia for pituitary adenoma. Like, why would this in and of itself uh, be sufficient to say MEN1? I agree. Uh, it's pretty limited in terms of the information. But this is the question, nevertheless, from NBME. So I wrote this question, but the material, the uh, this is stuff I cover from USMLE NBME material with students for step one. And so we are nevertheless in a position where we're forced to choose a gene with just parathyroid as our uh, stem. So that's MEN1. That satisfies MEN1. They could have had RET here. Okay, RET is not listed. RET uh, refers to MEN2A two and 2B. Two 2A two only includes parathyroid. So that's why RET is not also listed, because it, it could also be correct, since we don't have much information. Uh, MEN2A, of course, being parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia, and then it will be pheochromocytoma, and also medullary thyroid carcinoma, okay, or medullary thyroid carcinoma. That's MEN2A. That's RET gene. Uh, MEN2B does not include parathyroid, uh, but would be pheochromocytoma, medullary thyroid carcinoma, and mucosal neuromas, weird tumors of the oral cavity generally, and also marfanoid body habitus. All right, so they'll give you a guy who's like six foot five, sounds like Marfan syndrome, but then they'll say he also had or his mom had uh, a tumor removed from the neck. And they're talking about medullary thyroid carcinoma. It's men 2 b not Marfan syndrome. So anyway, this is MEN1. Okay, once again, pituitary, pancreas, parathyroid, and this is our parathyroid. FBN1 slash FBN2 refers to Marfan syndrome. Clearly not our diagnosis here. That's mutation in fibrillin. Okay, fibrillin is a glycoprotein that forms a sheath around elastin. It has nothing to do with collagen. That's a factoid that's important for you, is literally, quote, fibrillin is a glycoprotein that forms a sheath around elastin. Nothing to do with collagen, okay? People fuck that up. They confuse it. So that's Marfan syndrome. Obviously, a lot we can chat about, but tall, lanky person, arachnodactyly, long fingers. You get flat feet, pest planus. Uh, you can get chest, chest wall abnormalities like pectus excavatum, where the chest goes in, pectus carinatum goes out. Um, and you can get vascular issues such as mitral valve prolapse, aortic regurgitation, increased risk of aortic dissection. There is no increased risk of berry aneurysm with Marfan syndrome, uh, at least for USMLE purposes, okay? So when we talk about berry aneurysm, the saccular aneurysm, circular willis, don't fuck that up. That's Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. That's collagen type 3 when we talk about Ehlers-Danlos vascular subtype and polycystic, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease but not Marfan syndrome. People conflate that information. So uh, a lot I can chat about, but I'll just stay focused here. NF1, 
is classically going to be cafe au lait spots. They'll just be hype. They'll describe them as hyper pigmented macules. Uh, you can have auxiliary, axillary, or groin freckling. Uh, you can have neurofibromas. They're just nodules on the skin, essentially. You can have leash nodules. They're iris hamartomas. You can get pheochromocytoma. And you can get weird, like I just say weird brain tumors, like ependymoma, oligodendroglioma. That's classically NF1, okay? NF2 is going to be your bilateral acoustic schwannomas. Obviously, the schwannomas are not going to occur at the same exact time. They could just say there's a schwannoma, generally like a, a youngish person, young adult maybe, uh, but that would be NF2, okay? You can get other things like meningioma, um, but if the USMLE wants NF2, they're going to focus around schwannomas, okay? Now, VHL, von Hippel Lindau, will cause cerebellar and retinal hemangioblastomas, can also cause renal cell carcinoma, which can be bilateral. Now, the reason I paused for a second is because the retinal, I said I said VHL causes cerebellar and retinal hemangioblastomas. Some students mix up the retinal hemangioblastomas with NF1, which, is, which has the leash nodules, the iris hamartomas. So don't confuse that, okay? VHL, retinal hemangioblastomas, cerebellar hemangioblastomas. Um, it's constitutive activation of hypoxia-inducible factors, so you get vascular growth. Um, a lot we can chat about in terms of the genes, the chromosomes, all that stuff. Uh, FBN1, FBN2, chromosome 15, osmal dominant, NF1, chromosome 17, AD, NF2, chromosome 22, autosomal dominant, BHL, chromosome 3, autosomal dominant. Uh, M1, I'm actually not I'm not sure. It's like, ooh, wow. Oh, I'm, actually, no, I think that's chromosome 11. I think I think I'm, I think men one is chromosome eleven, and ret is chromosome ten. I believe I believe I could watch this video slash audio, listen to this audio later on, and be like, no, I was fucking wrong. But I'm pretty sure men one is actually chromosome eleven, and ret is chromosome ten. Um, but don't quote me on that. And that's pretty much it. All right. So as I said, uh, we just have a limited vignette of parathyroid uh, adenoma. And we're forced to choose a gene here, and men one is our best answer because it's um, pancreas pituitary parathyroid. Okay, that's it.